So today, what we're going to look at is what happens when a function is not a one-to-one. -one. How do we make an inverse out of that function? So we're going to take this and we're going to graph this. Now, before you do, tell me about this. What's the parent? Parabola. Parabola. Which way is it going in here? Down two, two to the right, right. right. Oh. and then where? Down, 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 down four. four. So what question are we going to end up turning in? Four. four. So you got a parabola that's going like this. Okay? Put this in your y equals and find me. Is this a minimum or a maximum? Min. Min. Is it the absolute or the relative? Absolute. Absolute. Which a lot of you forgot on the test. But I like it's y. Okay. So pull up your calculator. And in here, okay, in here, I want you to put, I want you to put your equation. Let's graph the whole thing and see what's going on here. Oh, on the other side. All right, hang in there. You only have a few more minutes of class. Yeah, what, 30 minutes? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this class is only going to take us 15 minutes. Okay, so Brianna found this. My problem with opening the window is the wind keeps pulling it. That window keeps banging on me. Okay, so now, find your minimum, and what is your minimum point? Two negative four. Good. Now, here's an issue. This is a function. It passes a, a vertical line test. Does it pass a horizontal? No. 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 So just like we did with your sine curves when we restricted their domain, we cut them before they turn, before they fail the horizontal. So we're going to have to take this parabola. This is the decreasing, decreasing. It stops, cut it. And this is the increasing, increasing. So now we have a parabola with two parts. A decreasing part and an increasing part. Okay, you're okay with that part? Uh, We've got a decreasing, increasing. Is that one of the ones that were in the packet? Because I might confuse that with the question. It's very similar to the one that we're gonna we're gonna limit it. Right? I don't understand why you were cutting it off. Well, because it, it fails a horizontal line test. So if we do the inverse. We get an inverse that looks like this, which is not a function. So we have to say, okay, you can only do part of this. Which part do you want? Do you want the decreasing part? Do you want the increasing part? Mm -hmm. So we're going to, well, it says, if root of sum is, if it doesn't say, do the increasing. If, uh, and I will always tell you. I will tell you which one to do. So there will never kind of be a gap for you guys. Now, so we're going to cut it right here, and we're going to use just this part. What's the domain of this increasing section? Zero. What's the, well, zero would be here. Would we positive positive so we're going to cut it right here. To the positive infinity. Two. To infinity. Oh, I thought you were talking about after infinity. You have to be cut. You have to be cut. No, I thought you meant after infinity. Oh, we have to rechange it. Okay. Nope, nope, let's, let's do this. We're going to take this and use this only piece right here. We're going to use this piece of our parabola. This is the point two, negative four. We're going to only use this piece. We're going to cut it before it turns. Because if it turns, we fail the horizontal line test. So normally your parabola is all real numbers. We're going to restrict it. So this is a restricted domain. And for this guy, as well as your whole parabola, what's your range? What's the lowest y that it uses? Two, infinity. Good? Okay. Now, let's go in your calculator and restrict this. Let's go to your calc. Let's come to your y equals. Now, the one thing is, you have to put parentheses around this. So, insert a set of parentheses here. Put parentheses around this whole function. It's second delete. The second delete, it will insert and then go all the way to the back and insert. Now, on yesterday's packet, we restricted your domain. Anybody remember how we did it? 
parentheses, F, it splits my domain. Do it with F, splits my domain. Greater than what? Two. Two. So we're going to come to the second test. We're going to take the greater than at number four. And we're going to say greater than two. I only want the part of my function that's two and above. This was on your sheet yesterday, guys, when you restricted domains on your sheet. Okay? So now, graph this. Ah, there's the part of my parabola that's increasing. That's the only part I want. Okay, so go back to your y equal. Put your function in a separate set of parentheses. Then come out here after the parentheses. For some odd reason, it wants it in parentheses. Otherwise, it's using just the minus 4. And say x greater than or equal to 2. The greater than or equal to is the second test. There's your, your, your test marks. So here we're testing equal, not equal, greater than or equal to, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Stuff them all there. <coughs> and had you done your work yesterday, you would have seen this because it went through it with you. So now, when you graph this, you have graphed a function with your restricted domain. Now, if we want this to find our inverse, we take everything from the x and the y, and we swap it. We're going to do this a couple of ways. I need your attention. So let's go here into your table. We're starting at the 2. Don't worry that they say 0, because it's just because it, we lightened it out of there, so it doesn't, doesn't have a value in it. Come to your table. Take out a couple of values, 2 and above. 2, negative 4. This is our key point, 3, negative 3, and 4, 0. Okay, now we're going to take this and make an inverse so we can graph it. How do we do that? Switch the y and the x. So we've got negative 4, 2, negative 3, 3, and 0, 4. So here is my piece over here. Here is my piece. And this starts at 2, negative 4. This is the most important part. Negative 4, 2 is going to start right there. And it's going to go through to 0, 4 over here. It's going to go like this. See it? What does it have to be a reflection over which line? equals y, y equals x, and there, do we see a reflection? Okay. All we did was take the table and interchange the x and the y, like the Quayla said, swap them around. Come up with your new point, graph it. Okay. We're going to let the calculator now do a draw inverse on this guy. This is what you were supposed to be doing in your packets yesterday. So we're going to go to second, Draw. We're going to come down to number 8. And why is it there? Second draw, number 8. We're going to tell it, I put this in Y1. There's, scroll, enter, enter. And then we hit enter again. There's my function, <coughs> there's the inverse. And we did this yesterday. And then when you found your inverse, you put it out there with the bubble in it to see if it was the same one. This is what you should have done yesterday. So now, we come back here and we say, okay, so far so good. We know all this information. Let's take this <coughs> and continue with our, our interchanging x and y.
Okay. Let's continue with this. We interchange everything to x and to y. So if this is our inverse, let's find your new domain for your inverse. Ricky, where does the domain come from for your inverse? What's your original one? This is, okay, so interchange this, and x now becomes a y. So this is going to become your new range. Your y becomes an x. Oh, okay, so it'll be negative 4 to infinity. Good. So it will be negative 4 to infinity. Yeah. And look at that. Here's your point, negative 4, 2. Isn't it negative 4 to infinity? Mm -hmm. Now, your y becomes your x, your x becomes your y. So it'll be 2 to infinity. So it'll be 2 to infinity. And isn't that true according to your graph? So the domain and the range interchange as well. Now, let's find your equation. We're going to set this equal to y equal. We're going to interchange the x and the y. We're going to interchange the x and the y. And we're going to solve for your new y. You have to isolate your y, add 4 to both sides. How do you undo a square? Square root. When you physically take a square root, what do you get? When you physically undo a square root, what do you get? Plus or minus. Good. Thanks, Tom. Okay, now all you have to do is add 2. I come on, thank you. Okay, stay focused, guys. Okay. Now, how many equations does this contain? Two. Two. A positive and a negative, the plus or minus. So since you want the increase in which part do you want? The positive. So now we want y is equal to two plus this. Now, we also want to make this a true inverse. So we change it to the f of negative 1. There's our inverse equation. You have to get First you have to square root it. Then you have to get y by itself. Then you add the 2. Okay. You can't take it out of the square root until you, the square root time until you square it. Okay, so now let's go to your y2. Oh. Let's put this in your y2, <coughs> and this is 2 plus radical <laughs> x plus 4. I'm just going to darken it, okay, rather than bubble it. So, look, isn't it right over my draw inverse? Didn't it draw right over it? That tells me I have the right inverse for this. It's true. It was good. Okay, now... This is what I was hoping that you got back to. Remember back to absolute value? We said it takes a positive path. We said it takes a negative path, remember? So when we work this out, we're going to either have a positive path or a negative path of your absolute value. So we're going to graph this with your core graph. <laughs> What's your core graph? Hmm? What's your core graph with us? What's your parent? I know. Ricky. Absolute value of x. Absolute value of x. So which way is this going? Uh, left two oh and then yeah. where? Left two uh, 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 five. Uh, five. So what quadrant are we going to turn? One. Two. 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 Is there one there? Two. <laughs> this came off of this. It went left two. So somewhere up here we're going to turn. Put this in your y1. Put it in your Y1. Okay. Absolute value is math. Scroll to num. 3x plus 2. Guys, fool around and you're never going to understand any of this. Okay. So let's graph and see what this looks like. A little absolute value that you said would turn in quadrant two. So, we draw our little absolute value. 
you say, is this a function? Yes. <laughs> Does it pass a horizontal line pass? Sure, I'll ask it again. Does it pass a horizontal line pass? No. no. So you got to cut it. So we got to cut it. So we got to cut it right when it turns because this is right where it's going to fail. This is the decreasing because it's coming down. This is the increasing. This time we want the decreasing. So the first thing you need to do is find me a minimum value. Okay, Find me a minimum on your graph. Negative two five? No. Negative one five. No? Okay. Oh, negative point six six, did you say? Negative point six 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 seven? Yeah. Yeah, five. Five. Okay. Five. I'm going to make this a little bit more exact. This is a repeating decimal. Anybody know what fraction this is? Yeah, two one thirds. One Good. Five. So let's make this negative two thirds, five. Wait, so all you did is look at a table? No, we did a minimum. Second oh, house, oh, yeah. minimum. You won't find this in your table because the x value is not a whole number. It's irrational. So you won't find it in your table this one. You always do a minimum or a maximum. Easiest way. Okay. Now, tell me what this restricted domain should be. If I'm looking at my decreasing part. Well, give it to me in your book. Um, is, um, negative, negative, negative infinity uh, to where am I going to stop? Negative two-thirds. Negative two -thirds. Okay, what's my range? Um, five to infinity. Good, five to infinity. So here's what my sketch is going to look like. This right here. Right? Okay, now, this is your most important point right here. Negative two-thirds, five. Let's interchange this point. What do you get? Five, negative two-thirds. So five, negative two-thirds. Can you tell me which way this line's going to go? Yeah. Where's it going? Uh, like out this way. Mm -hmm. Right? Do we see symmetry? Yeah. We can draw this one too, right? So yeah, let's see if this domain and range works. This now becomes five, negative two-thirds. So our domain becomes our range. So negative infinity to negative two-thirds. We came from negative infinity and stopped at the negative two-thirds. See it? The range becomes my domain. Five to infinity. Start at five and go to infinity. Is that true? Uh, Question? No, I was oh, stressing the rest. A lot of writing today. Okay, now we're going to restrict. We're going to restrict this domain. So put parentheses around this. What are you going to insert, right? Yeah, insert. Wait, what is the insert? Second to leave. leave. I just told you this the last time. Oh. <laughs> so, how do we write two, negative infinity to two thirds using a less than or a greater than sign? Oh, you go second. Less than or equal to. Good. So less than or equal to is number six, is less than or equal to negative two-thirds. Make the fraction. Let's graph it. Oh, isn't that the part we want? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was confused what to do after I inserted the... Go to your parentheses. Hi. Oops, I lost it. Do your draw inverse. Second program, go to number eight. Tell us to do a draw inverse on Y1. Wait, how do you get Y1 again? There, scroll to the right, enter, enter. <laughs> There's is right here. Right, but we're right. What if it's right. not split when we sketch it? That's not exactly how the graph is done here. Like, because how we sketched it, you're really just like straight. Oh, no, you're fine. You're just sketched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Everybody getting this? Yeah. Okay, not those that are not paying attention. That, I, I, you know what? Okay, now, let's find your equation. 
What's the rule for the equation? Switch the x and the y. Switch the x and the y. So we get three is equal. Oh, sorry, we get x equals. And keep your absolute value. Three y plus two plus five. You now have to solve for y. So subtract five. You need to ask ask. Isolate your absolute value. Now remember what we said. An absolute value has two paths, a positive and a negative. Which one do we want if we want the decreasing? Positive. The negative. So I'm going to switch this around and put my absolute value on this side. And I'm going to say, okay, here's my positive, keep everything the same. Here's my negative, take out my absolute value and set it to the negative of this. This is why we spend that time up front doing these things. Distribute your negative sign. And now all you have to do is solve for y. So subtract 2 from both sides. And then divide by 3. So right now you have this. You have y is equal to negative x plus 3 over 3. Wait, you I subtracted 2 from both sides. 5 minus 2, I got 3. Uh -oh. Yeah, I just, I was running out of space. Yeah. So I just kind of did it. What's it going to give me when I graph this? Not, not an apple, so we have no restriction because there's no variable. This is going to give me a line. This is going to give me this line all the way here, like this. But we only want this part. Do you see what this no, is happening? It's going to come all the way out here. We only want this piece. So we're going to have to limit the domain to this. We have to limit this domain. Because this is going to give you a line. That's going to be all the way up here. It doesn't know where to stop. So now when we put this in your calculator, we can put this in and be careful with your parentheses and limit your domain from x is greater than or equal to 5. There's a lot going on on this one. If I didn't limit it, let's go look at it without limiting it. Here's my y, 2. So I'm going to say this was negative x plus 3. Negative x plus 3 divided by 3. Watch what this gives me. See this line? And it, and it came on top of that? It's an entire line. We don't want the other piece. So we're going to go here, back to our y. We're going to put parentheses around this. But you still need to have parentheses around this whole thing. And then we're going to say, I want f greater than or equal to 5. Now we're going to watch it graph. There it is. It, it kind of just brings your line down there, but forget about that little piece there. It just doesn't know where, where to stop. But it starts it right here. And there's your inverse. You have to limit this in your calculator. Otherwise, your domain will go on and on. So remember to interchange every single part of this.